episode 319, Splitters. This is The Change Underground. I'm your host, John Moore. Decarbonise the air, recarbonise the soil. Well, we have a problem. I was listening to a podcast, No Names, No Pack Drill, about the, in inverted commas, real organic movement. Well, I can see the point. USDA organic standards have been interrogated by corporate lawyers to find loopholes. So hydroponic growing, a thing laughingly, laughably not organic, is included in the USDA system and relabeled as container growing, even if the containers only hold pebbles and the nutrients are coming from the fertigation. Clearly this has nothing to do with improving soil health over time, the actual point of organic growing. Other things like a concrete pad outside a chook shed, with doors that chooks can go outside through, passes as having access to fresh air, sunshine and soil. 5,000 head dairies milking three times a day with hay being trucked in after it's been cut can also qualify as organic under the standard. The real organic system is farmer owned and farmer regulated with the good name of the farm being the most important currency in the system. Great, all good, soil improving, etc. But the person involved then turned on regenerative practices, pointing out that tilling is the only way true, in inverted commas, organic farmers can deal with weeds. Fair enough, the individual stated that they hadn't really looked too deeply into regenerative practices and then pointed out that some no-till systems involving herbicides weren't organic. Well, obviously. That some farmers need to till for weed control says more about a lack of understanding of the weed creation process than it says about regenerative systems. A quick sidebar on weeds. Episode 127, Weeds from Work to Ecology, goes deeper and there's a link in the show notes, but here's the executive summary. When bare rock is first exposed to the removal of glaciers or volcanic eruption, or annual tillage, the response of natural systems is to cover the soil as quickly as possible, destabilises nutrients, slows runoff and cools the surface. So things like dandelions, docks and thistles and other broadleaf weeds find a foothold on and do their thing. They usually have a large floret of leaves to cover at, at ground level, deep tap roots for anchoring and drawing nutrients from the deeper levels, and a huge seed production ability, as well as a short life cycle. Grow, hold on tight, spread seeds are the steps. By tilling, we are returning the surface of the soil to the bed and neutered state that is the ecological niche for these types of plants. Now, I was crook a few years back and didn't move the pigs on quickly enough and, the reduce, and they reduced their run to such a state. I watched after I'd moved them on. Dandelions of plenty covered the soil, which was as hard as concrete, but didn't seem to slow them. They cycled through quickly and within months, clovers had arrived and vetches too. After about another six months of the approaching spring, grasses returned, docks arrived and red clovers joined the white and the vetches. The soil became softer and life returned to it from the edges inward. So the system works at what it does. The regenerative approach doesn't use animals as poorly as I did while I was poorly, but builds upon the principles of good soil management. I was able to use my minimal grasp of the processes to get out of the way and let the natural cycles to the inverted commas work for me. So if you're going to plough every year or every season and not use herbicides, as a, a good decision I would suggest, the not using herbicides, not the ploughing, <laughs> then the need to continue ploughing to halt the system at the point you want it to be at so you can grow some plants from further along in the regenerative cycle has you trapped into continuing the process. Real organic or not, nature doesn't care. The problem as I see it isn't the ideas of organic farming or that of regenerative, but the co-opting of the USDA standards by corporate lawyers, not farmers. Apparently, some of these container farms are up to 50,000 containers with massive irrigation and vertigation systems. As artificial, and trying to create, as artificial as trying to create plant-based meats, if I may be permitted that oxymoron. If you're not going to eat meat, don't. It's that simple. If you think you can reduce your carbon footprint by eating plants disguised as meat, you've missed the point. The factories making those things are just dry dog food factories with a different set of ingredients and recipes with all the transport costs, carbon and actual, 
involved in shipping in ingredients and sending out food-like substances. It's basically a con job backed by huge marketing efforts and some subtle, very subtle psychology. Change requires changes, to be blunt. I'm six months into a weight loss program, down 22.9 kilograms, uh, about 50 pounds, or three stone, eight pounds, for those in the know. There's 4.8 to go, kilograms to go. But the thing I've noticed in the chat is people always looking for ways to continue eating their favourite foods while still complying with the rules they've signed up for. It's just not possible. Eating the same thing that added the weight will not remove it. Doing the same ploughing each year because the weeds keep coming back will not stop the weeds coming back. Replace them within the system by using mulches, living mulches on larger areas, and I think smaller ones too, will improve the possibility of having an inverted commas weed-free set of ecological niches that are still productive. Clovers over sown with buckwheat, which is then underplanted with winter wheat, would have the soils constantly under vegetative cover and remove the bare soil niche that weeds love. As I've mentioned before, the organic farm in Ireland where we were staying had tractors with moldboard ploughs attached running so often the mine filtered out the diesel noises fairly quickly. I use volunteer interns, that is people, to eat 100 metre long vegetable beds over and over and then replow the beds between seasons. As a species, we can get stuck on process because that's how we've always done them. Organic CAFO dairies? No problem. There's a loophole for that. Organic non-soil growing methods? Piece of cake. The paperwork will make it legitimate, or at least legal. The problem is the food system, the debt levels of farmers, and the increasingly corporate nature of farming in the developed world. We can set rules we expect people to grow food under. These do not have to be decided by the chemical producers of the world with huge lobbying about budgets. They can be set by the will of the people expressed through their parliaments if we care enough about what we are doing. Continually splitting into different organisations, real organic, biodynamic, biointensive, hydroponic, aquaponic, Foucault, style and so on, does very little but make members of those tribes feel better about themselves because they are the true farmers. Unfettered laissez-faire capitalism benefits no one but the holders of capital. As citizens, we have the right and an expectation that the food that, that the land that feeds us will be there for our grandchildren and beyond, and that the food it produces will promote health, not chronic disease or poisoning outbreaks. It is not too much to expect. It is time we demanded it. Decarbonise the air, recarbonise the soil. Thank you all for listening, and I'll be back next week. This has been a JM Podcasting Services production. Link in the show notes.